All right, Warren, all at once you lost your voice. There was something came on the screen there. Oh, yeah. Said, I was just saying that our main crime areas in Perth have been Northbridge, um, Scarborough, and Fremantle. So they're probably the areas where we can, or parts of one little part of it, not Fremantle, but Scarborough and Northbridge and Perth, our main city area. Okay. Well, I don't know anything about what the area is like out there. I know nothing about it, really. Um, can we, one I'm, thing that'd be interesting to do, I don't know if you're open to doing it, but we have a lot of people from Sydney here today. Now, Sydney is a very big city with six, about five million people. And it's had a terrible time from the government lockdowns and from just some generally nasty stuff going down there at the moment, like the army. So I'm just curious if you could measure Sydney, tell, tell the people from Sydney what you're getting and maybe some some comments there where they can help a city that big. Okay, uh, my knowledge of the geography down there is not real good. I know Perth is on the western end of it. Sydney's Sydney east. Sydney is east and southern part. Is that correct? No, east. The east, the opposite side, and it's huge. It's a huge city, our biggest city, and yeah, it's got the army there. It's got all kinds of stuff happening now. Well, as a matter of fact, uh, I got an email on that yesterday showing um, uh, uh, and talking about that. Uh, there's also um, riots in uh, Switzerland, Italy, and France this week opposing the vaccine. So um, there's the whole world is in quite a bit of turmoil right now. Um, so let's see here, what's the energy in Sydney? Well, it's higher than I actually thought it would be. It's about 18,000. All right, now, let's try something. Now, this is an experiment, and I don't know if it's gonna work or not, but let's find out. Give me just a moment, okay? Okay, take a reading on Sydney now and see what happens. I'm getting about, I'm getting about 29,000, Raymond. What are you getting? Well, I got quite a bit higher than that. I may be optimistic. Yours is more realistic. But I got 48,000. Now, normally, that's, that's, I, I don't know what the problem is here. Uh, and maybe me just believing I could do it. I don't know. But normally, we get about the same readings on stuff. So I'm getting a much higher reading in yours, but yours is more believable. Uh, so... Let's wait, let's measure it again about the end of the talk and see if anything has changed by then. Changing it that quick is, is questionable, I know that. Uh, but uh, anyway, let's just one more. I just want to see if I could do the folks that are a favor today. And I did basically the same thing that I did for first. Um, and uh, sometimes we may do things a little different just to. We do whatever we happen to think about at the time, really. But if we are right, and I think we are, then we can change a lot of places on this planet. Now, there are people who are just low conscious people. And I don't, I don't think we can pick them up. I really don't. I have people write me every now and then about relatives. And I said, well, their level of consciousness is lower than a rock. Well, can you help them? No, I can't. They're right where they want to be. And um, I found that if we can depossess pretty much anybody we want to, whether they like it or not. 
However, to try to make a person a better person that does not want to improve is pretty much impossible. They have to want it. And I've learned that people will want to hire me to work on a family member. And I usually turn them down. And this is the first thing I do, and that usually keeps them having to do anything else. I ask, what is their level of receptivity to my work? And I usually get a zero or below. And I just write back and say, don't bother to pay me. You'd be wasting your money. It's not fair for me to take your money when I know it's probably not going to work. So I'm as blunt as can be, but I treat people fair and honest. Uh, because if people don't want to change, they probably won't. And then there are people you might can get to change for a few days and then they'll revert back. So uh, as many good things as there are to do out there, I don't really waste my time with those type of people. I am very judgmental and no apologies. Uh, if people are good, honest people want to help themselves, I'll try to help them. If they don't want my help, I'll leave them alone. I don't even want to hear from them. It makes life a lot easier. I do not have a mission to save the world. I really don't. Uh, I have a, I wouldn't call it a mission, it's a strong desire to help the people like we have listening in this morning that really want to learn to do something. Those people I'm willing to really do whatever I can for. But uh, unless you're ready, I really don't want to talk to you. I agree. I've taken, it's been the best thing I've ever done, what you said there. Just if someone's toxic, why waste your time with them? Mm -hmm. Can okay, we, um, can we, um, can we also test Brisbane and Melbourne, Raymond? Is it possible just to test Brisbane and um, Brisbane City and Melbourne City and see what readings you get for those two cities? Well, okay, let's see here if I can do that. Brisbane. I get 18,000 there, and I missed the name of the second one. Melbourne. Melbourne, oh, okay. Um, it's about 20,500. The real truth, Warren, is those readings are not that bad. Uh, I mean, if you compare them to Perth, yeah, it looks bad, but that's because you've done all the energy work for her. Nobody's done it apparently for these other places. Okay, because in the in the states, I sometimes get zero readings on cities. Uh, and I, I was testing a group of cities one day in, in the states. They were all at zero. So overall, it appears to me that the energy in your cities in Australia are far better than they are in America. And I, I really don't doubt that. I don't doubt that a bit. So, uh, but they can still use some improvement. So you're opening up a door here today that I didn't know was going to be open. So can we take on these other two cities with the same method? And I get a yes. What it looks like we're doing is changing the majority of the population of Australia, if that can be done. And I don't guess we should really doubt it. So let's just try it and see. So you just do your problem package, Raymond? Is that what you're doing? Clearing your problem package? I didn't even do that. Uh, all I did, I can do that, and I will if you want me to, but all I really did was took the negative emotions within the people yeah. and change that. Because, see, it's people that affect energy. Yeah. I mean, in a nutshell, I don't think the, I don't think the, the animals affect the energy that much. It's people. Yeah. Um, so, because in a city that has a zero energy level, it's where the crime rate's high. And uh, in America, most cities have low energy. Uh, now, out in the farmland, it's going to be much higher. Uh, so, I just had to conclude people is what brings the energy down. 
people and their activities, what they do. Uh, thoughts and actions affect energy, good or bad. Okay, so let's see here what we can do. I'm going to try something. And I want you to measure this. On all of the cities, I don't think you've got all that many real large cities. I think they're all along the coast. Um, I know, uh, well, I don't really know that much, but it uh, seemed like in the southeast part of the, of the country is where the largest part of the population is. Is that correct? So yes. I have a map on that. So of all the large cities, and I don't even know the names of all of them, what would be the average energy level of those? And I get about, uh, let's see, just exactly, about 16,000. Well, if I measure the average energy of the 10 largest cities in the U.S., I get 2,000. So you're a whole lot better off than we are here. Uh, so what let's, let's do, let's just try something. Now I'll be with you back in just a minute now. All right, Warren, let's take a take a look. You, you measure any of them you want now and see what you get. Brisbane, I'm getting 38,000. Okay, I didn't measure. Let's see. On the, what's the average energy of all the cities there now? Well, I checked all the average, and I got forty-one thousand. Yeah, I'm getting about. If it's true, then you should see a positive change in the country. And I'm very glad to help out if, in fact, we are doing anything here, and I think we are, because the higher the energy, the fewer problems you're going to have. It's the low energy places where the crime is. So um, what I did, I ran the problem package on all, uh, basically on all of Australia. I didn't know I could do that, but you kind of gave me an idea that I think, well, okay, why not? I won't get a better opportunity. So uh, I would like some feedback on this uh, uh, from you as, as you get it and from the people that various places if they have noticed a difference or they can write me directly yeah. now folks if you write me i will get back with you as best i can this is uh uh gardening season here and i grow a lot of vegetables so i'm picking squash cucumbers tomatoes right now we also live as our ancestors did we can these vegetables and uh, we grow our own food for eat pretty much year round. So it's a very busy season here now. And if I get overwhelmed with mail, I may not be able to get back to you, but I would at least read your email. Um, and if I could, I would uh, I, I would respond to you. Now in the winter time, things slow down a, a bit and I don't have quite as much uh, outside work to do and, and uh, usually keep up with the mail a little better. Just I kind of want folks to know if you don't get a response from it, just because I've been overwhelmed. Okay, uh, Warren, if we've done this, even a part of what we think we have here today, I doubt seriously if it's ever been done in the history of the world. Well, and everyone's what, saying, everyone is I, saying they can feel the difference, Raymond. I mean, I can, I'm feeling so like, I can't believe it. And everybody, um, everyone here is saying they're feeling burdens lift off them. They've stopped feeling agitated. They're feeling relief. Someone's smiling. Someone feels a burden lift from their back. 
lots of people smiling. Okay, that's good. Um, you, you folks make my day. I'll, whenever I take the time to go on a, a talk show like this, I want to help people. That's the purpose of it. Uh, so, yes, thank you very much. I appreciate your feedback. Um, okay, uh, let's see. Where were we going? Oh, yes. Uh, you said something there I need to correct you on. And for everybody else out there, too. You said you felt so good you couldn't believe it. Um, you know, we need to change that phrase <laughs> uh, because your head, your body listens while your mouth is talking. And not believing something good is a self-defeating phrase. You knew that. Right. <laughs> Tell everybody <I> else. <laughs> so um, I have avoided uh, using uh disempowering phrases um and uh, like a number of phrases if you don't like somebody you might say well that person just makes me sick well what you did you just gave that person power over your health you can say i don't like them so and so and there's probably nothing wrong with that uh uh but to give anyone power over your health and the way you feel is not a smart thing to do. So just, if I don't tell you, nobody else will. That's why I tell people a lot of things. That's why I'm so blunt, because nobody else is gonna say that kind of stuff. They're not likely to. Um, I've just observed people uh, during my lifetime and I have I've learned more from losers than I have from winners. Well, there's more losers to learn from than there are winners. But what you learn from then is what not to do. And you don't say things that you don't want to happen. Uh, and you don't even think things you, you don't want to happen. Uh, so let me give you a hint, folks, what to do. I used to attract a number of violent people into my life, or people with violent tendencies. Being a construction foreman, I attracted a lot of people that uh, they weren't real, real bad folks, but they you know, had some bad characteristics. Uh, and I started thinking, I had more violent thoughts. And I'm thinking, okay, energy follows thought. So I've got to stop this. So what I would do, every time I would think of something that was real violent or non-beneficial to me, either way, I would imagine I had a bucket of red paint and a paintbrush. I would imagine, that's a key word, that I was dipping that paintbrush in that bucket and make drawing a big red X through the image in my mind. Within two weeks, the negative thought pretty much disappeared. Because people say, well, I can't help thinking about something. Well, that may be true, but you can do something when you think about it. And that's paint a big red X across it. It's amazing how well it works. So the brain thinks in pictures better than it thinks in words. So if you want to create something, you think of what you want to create, create a mental picture of it. One thing we've been working on is helping people be happier, especially in business. You're always going to get a better deal and make more money if you deal with somebody that's happy. They're going to treat you better. So you imagine the person being happy. If you say, boy, I dread having to deal with them uh, today. They're always so grouchy and so negative. And yeah, I just really dread that. Well, create a mental picture of whatever it would take to make them happy. You say, how do you know? Well, just see what shows up. Uh, and uh, we've been having some real good results with that, especially in negotiate business negotiations. See, I work for a lot of people in a lot of places around the world, and I just don't ever say too much about who I work for. But um, that's that's what we're doing to what is what I call stack the deck in your favor. And because I really believe in that. If you're gonna be in something uh, in, a, in a business 
or a transaction or whatever where you want to win. Otherwise, you shouldn't be there. But it can also be a win-win situation. You don't have to win by taking advantage of other people. I always like to have a win-win situation where um, I come out okay and, uh, and so does the other person. That's the way I choose to do business. That's why I don't ever send anybody a bill for what I do. I let them pay me what they think it's worth. That way nobody can ever say I cheated them. I don't expect the whole world to like my attitudes because they're pretty blunt for some people. But I try not to ever give a reason to anyone thinking I take advantage of them. So it's, it's worked pretty good for me so far. Uh, so uh, you bring up the subject, Warren, because I get to talk and I wander down all kind of side was, trails here. And uh, uh, I, I need was, you to kind of keep me, get me on track. The other, I was just going to say on what you said, Ben, about business being happy. I've actually been really working on our state, on where we live, on our politicians, because I've been thinking if our politicians are happy and we don't have demons bugging them, and they've got happy, happy hearts and families, they'll treat their people better. So we've been really working on our politicians in West Australia and working to see them get happier. And I have noticed that their press conferences and generally what's been happening over here, we've had a fairly good quality of life. So I think what, what you said there, Raymond, can also be taken to world leaders and politicians. Mm -hmm. Well, I have found that politicians seem to be the hardest group of people to work on. Uh, I don't think I can work on serial killers easier than I can work on politicians. Uh, seriously, I've, been, I've had a good success at stopping serial killers, a real good success. But politicians is a whole new thing. Now, have I worked on them? Uh, yes, there is one fairly high-ranking politician that employs me to do work for them. Uh, and um, they think I'm winning. They seem to keep coming back for more. So I always try to help them if I can. Okay, Warren, what, you sent me a list of stuff, but I don't have it in front of me because I've got the screen up there now. So what was on the list that you sent or whatever oh. you wanted to talk about? The other thing I was going to ask you was the clearing that you did to break curses on women. Is this something that you've already done or we could or we could specifically do again on this particular group of women? Um, uh, that, that's, we, that's one question I'm being asked. We did that on the evening of the 28th of May. Um, it's something I do. I did run into something in India this week. Actually, it was yesterday. Um, the culture in India is so much different than the culture in the Caucasian world. And I have, I have friends in various cultures kind of around the world, really. not everywhere, but various places. And this is someone in India that I was working with. And it's a female. And over there, the females don't have the freedom that they do in Australia or in America. The Caucasians seem to be, uh, Caucasian women seem to have more freedom than, than others. Places in the Middle East seem to be the worst. Um, and that's what we, we were talking about. Uh, when everything in the Bible came out of the Middle East, usually, well, in Israel. If the Bible was written by the people, uh, the, all it was men, all of them were, were men, no, I don't think any women wrote the Bible, uh, and they were all from, from Israel. Uh, so I don't think any Greeks wrote the Bible or any Italians or Spaniards. Um, so I'm just looking at the, what, what is this book really about? And I, let, let's go way back in time. Uh, back when I was a kid, I had this thought one day, really strong, I never did forget it. I would like to be able to go back in time and prevent people from being tortured. 
It took years to ever learn how to do that, but I learned how. Now, I have varying degrees of success with it. Sometimes I have miracles. Sometimes I don't. But overall, we do have success. So I kind of put that in with this, that women and majority of my friends just happen to be female. Yeah, I've got uh, roughneck uh, uh, hillbilly friends here, been friends all my life, but the ones I'm friends with around the world are mostly female. And I just, and I've only got five living relatives. Four of them are female. A wife, a daughter, and two grandkids. Uh, so my goal was for these kids to grow up, not only my kids, my grandkids, but my friends' kids, to grow up in a world where they have more freedom. And because to me, freedom has always been important. It's the most important thing in my life. And as a result of that, I started thinking, well, what can I do to make the world that way? And in a, when I start thinking about something, I usually attract a way to do it. And that's a lesson I would like to send out there to everybody. If you want to do something and you don't know how, just think about it a lot. Now, sometimes I've had to think about things for years before I ever learned how to do them. But so far, I haven't learned everything now. So don't expect that. But I've learned a lot of things. And I learned that the most important thing is wherever I put my thoughts, I put my energy. And if we have a desire to learn something, it seems to attract to us the opportunity to learn. That's the best way I know to say it. So um, with the group in India, and I don't remember exactly what the wording was, but that's not important right now because I'm not talking to anybody from India. But, uh, and I haven't gotten any feedback yet because I only did it yesterday. Uh, and I can't really say it worked, but I can say this, I had to work a little bit differently with the Indian culture than the Caucasian culture, because with the Caucasian culture, this was basically a, the writings in the Bible. Well, the Indian, I asked the girl I was talking to, how much do you know about the Bible? And she said, nothing. So I think, well, that probably don't apply to them but it, de it definitely applies to Europeans, Asians, I mean, excuse me, Europeans, uh, Americans, and Australians, but for, for the most part. Now, not everybody, but for the most part. Um, because that's where their religion it comes from, based on regardless of which religion you are, it's pretty much based on, uh, on the Bible, like the Catholics and all the various different denominations. Uh, so I thought, well, let's just see what we can do with it. Now, there may be other countries that have different things that need to be cleared, but if I don't know anyone in that country, I'm probably never going to find out. Uh, I find that I need someone, and this is important, folks. You need someone physically on location if you're actually going to get much done. That's why I don't let people just send me to some, clean up some spot on the world. Last week, somebody wanted me to clean up something in China. Well, nobody in China asked me to clean it up. The work I did in Canada on the Indian village and the Eskimo village was done because a Canadian Mountie physically on location requested help. Now, please let that sink in. If you write and say, hey, there's something over in, uh, let's say down in South America, it really needs help. Yeah, well, let somebody down there ask for help then. And I'm not going to let somebody from one part of the world send me somewhere else to do something that they think needs to be done. A lot of people have that problem. So please don't ask me to do stuff like that because you're not going to get a polite answer. Uh, I had uh, did a class a couple of weeks ago and some lady wanted to manipulate the class into something that her sister had read on the internet. I said, sit down and be quiet. I'm not going to waste time doing something like that. Uh, so there's, there's people out there that want me to fight their wars for them. They're not involved. They don't want to get involved. They want me to do it. Well, forget it, folks. It ain't going to happen. 
So uh, the best way I know to prevent problems is just to be blunt like this and call a spade a spade, tell it the way it is. People know where you stand that way. And that way you can help the people that really have legitimate problems and keep the rest of them away. And both are important. Yep. So uh, where are we going next? Uh, how, many, how long are we going to talk? We've already talked an hour. We're going to talk longer than that. Oh, I think we're just about oh. finished. I, I, all, all my questions have been asked, Raymond. So maybe we could just finish off by just checking the overall energy of the group and seeing. Okay, if, let's do that. Especially with finances okay. and with finances. Now, especially. you want to take some questions, I'm okay with that. Yep. I don't have a real strict time. And if it's something important, uh, we'll, we'll talk long if we need to. Cool. Um, but right. Um, Right now, when we started out the energy group, according to my doubting here, and I don't know where all you people are from, but uh, the energy of the group was about 25,000, and uh, it's about 45,000 now. So I didn't really work on the group that we were listing, uh, that are listening to. Let me do that right now. And what I want to do is run the problem package on you folks. And if you don't have it, write me and I'll send it to you. Or if Warren has it, he can send it to you. I, I can give Warren, it, yeah. So I don't know if you're still there or not. Uh, yep. There you are. Oh, yeah. So what I'm going to do here is let's neutralize the, the negative effect of the problem package on these folks. Now, I've added more to it. We can send you the video. Be glad to do it. But I got a little bit smarter since I filmed it. Plus, the stuff I put in it, I did not particularly want to put in a film. Uh, so what I have added to the seven things I had in that problem package are social media, uh, TV news, government, and religion. Uh, that has a pretty negative effect on folks. But, and you can add that yourself. And anything else you can think of. One of the things, Warren, I've been doing is when I do the energy clearing every day, it's neutralizing the folks' family upon each other. I'll tell you why I'm doing that. Uh, there's a, 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 lot, a lot of people are having problems over this vaccine. Now, I don't want to get into the vaccine at all, but I'm going to say this. The people that got vaccinated want everybody else to get vaccinated. The people that didn't are now afraid to be around the people that did get vaccinated. And it's like, it's too, it's almost like a war between the two sides. Well, nobody's going to win this war. Uh, it's going to weaken both sides. And in my opinion, it falls under the heading, it's been used in warfare for centuries. And right here it is in one simple statement, divide and conquer. So what I work at doing every morning when I do the clearing is to neutralize the folks' families upon each other. Now, I don't know how much good I'm doing, but my intentions are good anyway. Because I don't think I've ever seen anything, including politics and religion, that cause so much division among, fa among families. Okay, so now, we started out with about 25,000. And no more than I've done, we've got your energy up to about 60,000. Um, hmm. All right. Now, let's do another one. Everyone, all of us are a product of our ancestors. So let's see if we can neutralize the negative effect of our heritage, culture, and religion of ancestry upon us. And I was my own first customer in doing this. All right, and now that brought the energy level up to about, about 90,000. Okay. With some more work, we could, you know, I've got a whole long list of stuff I do for people. 
Uh, and whenever we get our filming done, this next class I'm going to do, make it available, everything will be uh, in there. I want to make this covering everything that I know how to do at this time. And of course, a year from now, there may be something else. And the reason it was time to refilm something like we had that webinar where we closed the webinar out because it was, it's still true. All the basics are still true and the basics are going to remain. But uh, there were things that has changed since then. In the 22, 23 years that I've been measuring energy, I bet I've seen at least 20 separate situations affecting humans that stays for a while and disappears. The last thing was um, body chemistry. We went through several months where the majority of the people I worked with had an imbalance of body chemistry. Within the last three months, it's cleared up. It started gradually. What cleared it up? Why? I have no idea. So only thing I can say is energy changes and it does it without warning. Okay, did we have any questions that come in that folks wanted to address? No, I think that everyone is so grateful and would love to get some scripts. So I'm definitely going to encourage people to join your recorded program when you bring it out, Raymond, and I'll be certainly signing up for it. And probably my only question I'd like to ask, which a couple have asked about, is I know Jeff Jones, your friend, did some stuff around financial clearing, which was very effective for him. I was just wondering yeah. if that's any comments on that. Like, remember Jeff telling me himself about how he transformed his business and financial situation by direct dowsing and tangent. Okay, I'll answer that for Jeff the best I can because Jeff was with me in a class I did last week. I did a class last week down in Georgia, the first one I've done in two years. I'd not eaten in a restaurant in two years. I'd not stayed in a motel. I hadn't been hardly away from home. Uh, and he, he went, went with me and he was very useful in place, extremely useful, but let's go back in time. I'm going to tell this the way Jeff tells it. Jeff was roughly half a million dollars in debt because he had got in a business with someone who was very irresponsible and had put, had put the company in, in a very serious debt. All right. His partner wanted to go bankrupt. Jeff has too much integrity to go bankrupt. He says, no, I'm going to pay it all. His partner apparently bailed out on him and left Jeff with the debt. Well, that was about the time that I discovered that prosperity had a spirit and it had a frequency. So we put Jeff's business on the proper frequency and invited in and thanked the spirit of prosperity. Well, one of the first things we did, he worked in the mining industry and there was a, something that needed to be built that required special tools. Uh, and he didn't know, or tools or equipment, he didn't know for a fact that these had ever been invented. So he came to visit me. This is one of the first projects we did. We found the equipment he needed, even though we didn't even know it had been invented, in an abandoned barn somewhere in North Carolina. He bought it for a very small fraction, like five cents on the dollar, of what it would have cost to have had this manufactured. Saved, I, th <coughs> I think he saved around $300,000 on that. Then what happened? A number of his clients had gone bankrupt. That's what, why he was in, in trouble, because his client couldn't pay him. Even though they had already filed bankruptcy, they still started, as they were able to, pay him back. He started getting checks for like $10,000 that he never expected to get. So many of his, his bankrupt clients literally came forward and paid, paid him off. Then there was just 
um, all manner of opportunities that appeared. But Jeff is a very positive thinking person, extremely positive. And uh, he wasn't worried. He had a determination. He says, I am going to pay off my debts. He was determined to do it. Well, now he owns a number of, of buildings, a number of uh, businesses. Uh, he is doing quite well. And we still work on prosperity. I work with him uh, probably, I work with Jeff closer than any other male that, that I'm friends with. Uh, so putting your business on a frequency of prosperity, inviting in the spirit of prosperity and thanking the spirit of prosperity every morning. I do that. I believe in what I teach. I practice what I teach and it works. Also program yourself to be at the right place at the right time because timing is everything. Program yourself to attract people, circumstances and events, bring prosperity and happiness. You don't need to bring people into your life to bring poverty and misery, repel them. I repel all people and energy that are harmful to me. These are affirmations that I use. Uh, affirmations are a wonderful way to brainwash yourself. And uh, that's, um, I just basically practice what I teach. And so does Jeff. And we work to help each other. See, so if I helped him make or save $300,000, I didn't ask him for any money. I've never done that. He's never asked me for any. We help each other because we want to. I remember if there was a cattle rancher uh, in Canada back in 04 when uh, they claimed there was a mad cow found up there and they shut down the entire uh, exporting of beef of Canada. And this fellow had a beef production plant. Uh, and he lost a million dollars in about two weeks, a week, two weeks. I mean, it just, money just evaporated. And I got to thinking, this is caused by fear. Everybody's afraid to eat a hamburger. So I took all the fear surrounding that and turned it into prosperity for him. I don't know exactly how he did it, but within two weeks, he had his million dollars back. Well, someone asked me with a rather sarcastic tone, well, how much did he give you? He didn't give me any, I didn't ask him for any. See, uh, too many people out there with an attitude, if you help somebody, um, how, much you, how much are they gonna get for it? I don't, I don't think that way. I help people because I want to help them. And I don't, a certain elements of people, I don't wanna help. I'll be real blunt and upfront about it. There are people I just absolutely refuse to help because they're low life. I don't believe in human equality. It doesn't exist. So I'm very cautious as to who I work with and who I let into my life. That's why I don't have the problems that other people have. I don't tolerate them. So that's about the best way I know to, to tell you on that. But um, I cannot overstate some of the things I just said. So if there's, we aren't keeping any secrets back, folks. we're just telling you exactly what we do. Yeah. Well, that's been great. I mean, maybe just the final thing we can finish from Raymond is just, just out of curiosity, just see what percentage the overall group is aligned with the spirit of prosperity. Oh, I missed the question there. Uh, Could we maybe finish the last thing to finish off now? Just see what oh. percentage this group is aligned with the spirit of prosperity. I get only 10%. Well, let me see if I can do you folks a favor. Let's see if I can bring in, let's think and bring in the spirit of prosperity for you and your business. And let's put those of you who have a business, let's put your business on a frequency of prosperity. Can we do that? Yeah, I think so. Don't take me a moment here. Okay, but uh, 
I'm perfectly happy to help you out to get you started, but you really need to do this about every day. I found that a business will not hold a frequency of prosperity very long. It needs to be uh, updated quite, quite frequently. Energy work is like taking a bath. Okay, I had a shower, my hair is clean, my clothes are clean. By the time this is over within an hour, I'm probably gonna be covered with sweat and dirt. Why? Because I'm a farmer. I run chainsaws, I work in the dirt, work in the garden, and do all this. I'll need another bath. Okay, energy works the same way. You can't clean up somebody or yourself one time and think it'll last forever. It just don't work that way. And where you go affects your energy. If you stay with reasonably positive people, and well, actually I live like a hermit. I live right here in the, in the forest and nobody around. But those of you who live around people, uh, it's a quality of people. Uh, if you are around good, positive people, uh, your energy will stay up. If you're around people who bitch, whine, and complain, uh, they're going to drag your energy down. So what do you do? Well, as much as possible, you avoid those people. Uh, that's why that I read an email uh, to get, I got one this morning. I will respond to it and say, I am unable to help you. Why? Because it was full of bitching, whining, and complaining. I won't waste my time. It's real simple. Uh, uh, so that's, I don't know, we covered a lot of stuff here today, Warren. We did things today that I'd never done before. I really appreciate the opportunity. I uh, appreciate feedback. Hey, That's how we learn. And um, right now, the amount, the level of prosperity on the folks went from 10% to 100%. But Great. you got to think, you can't worry about poverty and talk about poverty because I grew up in that world and, and I never made any money on it either. Uh, you got to think prosperity, incorporate it into your vocabulary as much as possible. Whatever you want, you think about it and you talk about it. And that's why you get it. And it's, I grew up in a negative thinking world of good people, but bad thinkers. And they talked about aches and pains and poverty and bad luck. And you know what? They got all of them. Pretty much. It was so darn simple, but they couldn't seem to ever grasp the, the concept. So I talk bluntly because people can understand it real well. And besides that, it's just who I am. Uh, Tim, there's a lot of polished speakers out there that use a lot of big words and too many of them, but don't really tell you that much. Uh, so I'm a very hard man to impress. Uh, only people that impress me are the ones that have done something and won. The ones that just talk about it don't impress me much. Well, so, thank you, thank you, Raymond. I had lots of people are writing thanking you from their heart, saying thank you so much, love it. Thank you very much. You know, love the frequency of abundance. There's people in tears, especially the women here. Yeah, so thank you, Raymond. You're getting a lot of um, a lot of love being sent your way. And I want to thank, thank you for the opportunity. Because if you hadn't have coordinated this, it wouldn't be happening. So I appreciate what you're doing for people out there. That's why, <laughs> that's why I want to help all of you. And we'll do it again if you want to, if folks need it. Wonderful. Thank you. And when is your when is your webinar? Two weeks time? Your recorded one? Uh, no, no. The class is in two weeks. It will probably take us another two weeks to get it edited and get it ready to put out there. And we haven't figured out exactly how, or at least I haven't figured out how we're going to do it. Uh, my brother's the one doing that. And he will, um, uh, we got to figure out a very simple way, effective way an economical way to get it out there to people. Yeah. And, uh, and I am not computer, computer smart. I really don't. That's why I have to get other people to do things for me. 
I do things like change the taste of water and change the energy of a country. I don't know anything know about. I don't know anything about computers. <laughs> so. Okay. Well, I'll keep in contact about that. So thank you, Raymond. Yes, sir. You folks have a good evening. You have a good day. Bye.